Which is better, 308 Winchester or 30 6 That's the question we're going to answer in this video, including rifles, reloading, and ballistics. Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I have to say, to start off this video, I'm a little bit sad. Uh, I kind of slighted Guy Miner on this video. <laughs> uh, really, dude? Normally this kind of a story would go to Guy Miner, but he is moving right now. So I took this awesome, juicy story. We've done a ton of content around 308 Winchester and 30 out six, and I know they are a couple of the most popular bottleneck rifle cartridges. So in this video, I wanted to take a very specific look at each of these cartridges, get a little bit of background information for each, but then to really look at what is the real difference? What kind of performance differences are you gonna see? What kind of differences are you gonna see with reloading equipment and process? And then, you know, ballistics, long range. What is the real difference? So let's start with the history. And I'm gonna go side by side here. So 308 Winchester was developed in 1952, where 30-06 was developed in 1906. That's what the .06 is on the end, the year of 1906. So 30 out 6 is a good bit older than 308 Winchester. Both of these cartridges are 30 caliber and use a 0 .308 diameter bullet. The case rim is 0 .4728. This is, I call it the 308 case rim. Of course, 30 out 6 came first, and it's really shared by a ton of different rifle cartridges. All of the Creedmoors, 270 win, 243 win, you know, we've got 6GT, 6 Dasher. I mean, there's literally a cartridge uh, from mild to wild in, in this case room. And that's awesome because your rifle's gonna use the same bolt face, your reloading equipment is gonna use the same shell holder and shell plate, that kind of thing. Here's one of the biggest differences between 308 Win and 30 out 6, and that's case capacity. The 308 Winchester has 56 grains of water, whereas the 30 out 6 has 21% more coming in at 68 grains of water. The shoulder angle for 308 Winchester is 20 degrees, whereas the shoulder degree on 30 out six is 17 degrees. Another big difference between the two is allowable cartridge overall length, max COL. That's 2.810 for the 308 Winchester, which means it's specifically a short action cartridge and it's 3.340 inches for 30 out six, which means it's specifically a long action cartridge. So let's talk reloading equipment for both, and I'll touch on the process at a very high level as well. I've got a whole bunch of reloading gear here from RCBS, and I'll mention all of this gear is gonna work for both 308 and 30 out six. The difference is gonna be mainly in the dies. I'll get into a more detailed examination between the two here. But you could use a single stage press, you could use a turret press, or you can use a progressive press. You just have to make sure that you have the right capacity. Noting that, you can kind of squeeze extra capacity out of a press by doing things like tipping the bullet into the die and then seating it on the top of the case and then seating the bullet. It might not be as convenient, but it could be one of those scenarios where you can load 30-06 on a smaller press, it's just not gonna be quite as smooth and efficient. Okay, so here's the big difference between the two with reloading. What's the same? Shell holders and shell plate, right? The case rim is literally the same. Primers are gonna be the same for the most part. Case prep is gonna be the same. The tools, the brushes, the specialized cutters for chamfer, deburr, that kind of thing. The powder funnel is gonna be the same. Some of them have spin-on adapters, right? It's gonna be that 30 cal. Bullets are pretty much gonna be the same. I'll talk about that in more depth in, in just a moment. Okay, so a couple quick notes here. So first about primers. Some 308 Winchester car, uh, shell casings are gonna have small primer pockets like Palma style cases. Also, bullets are the same, but you're gonna to wanna to check your twist rate to make sure that it, your bullet's gonna stabilize in either. For example, both can go up to 215 grains. Again, I'll talk about this in a second. Uh, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that the twist rate is correct for any bullet that you choose for any reloading scenario. So what's different between the two for reloading specifically? Different load data, including different powders, right? I'll talk about that in, in depth in, in just a moment as well. Brass obviously is gonna be different. Press capacity, 
As I noted previously, you need a little bit more capacity for 30 out six. Usually you can make it work. And then dies are gonna be different as well. I will make a note about the press capacity. On a progressive press, it's much harder to cheat uh, unless you have a non-auto indexing press. If you can tip the bullet and set it in place before you actuate the press, that's gonna be possibly a way that you could squeeze extra capacity. But because of the auto indexing, if you don't have enough capacity, you'll run into issues like the bullet hitting the bottom of one of the dies and cartridges tipping, you know, that, that kind of thing. Okay, and then I have a couple different die sets here. Uh, we have a whole super in-depth video on RCBS rifle dies, all of the different sets, all of the different dies, all of the different options. Just note that they're, they are different. The shoulder angle is different, the length is different, the body taper is different. Right, so they're similar. Are you know, 30 out six dies are a little bit longer, but they are specific to the cartridge. But overall, the reloading process is not going to change much from one bottleneck rifle cartridge to another. There are just special considerations. An example would be if you're loading 223, you have to cram all your powder through a 22 cal case neck, and sometimes you have to wait a little bit longer to let the powder drop. Certain powders might bridge, and so on and so forth. Okay. So I did a bunch of research and I reached out to Justin, one of the ballisticians over at Hodgden, and I put together something I haven't seen before here. This is a side-by-side -side showing powders that Hodgden has low data for, for 308 and for 30-06. And I actually also coded these. If you look at these dark red dots, these indicate which powders can be used with both in terms of what powders Hodgson has reloading data for, for both. So uh, I also have bolded the powders that had the most number of different loads available. It doesn't mean it's the best powder for that particular cartridge, but it was where we're up around 10 loads uh, available from Hodgson for a given cartridge here respectively. So we have the green, that's 308, and we have 30 out six here, that's in blue. What's great about these cartridges is how many loads and how many different scenarios are covered because they have such a history and so many people shoot 308 and 30-06. So if you're shooting long range or if you're hunting, you're going to find powders, you're going to find components that are going to work really, really well for both. So the question is then how do I decide what powder to use? And what I suggest doing is starting with the bullet. The weight range of the bullet is going to dictate whether you go with a faster powder, which is usually going to be for a lighter bullet, or a slower powder, which favors heavier bullets and larger case capacity, more towards, you know, magnum, that kind of thing. And you'll see that trend here. We have powders for 308 here that appear before, i.e. are faster than what you see on 30-06. And 30-06 continues uh, as we go from from fastest to slowest further down the list with IMR 7977 being the slowest powder that we see for 30 out six and Winchester 760 being the slowest powder that we see for 308. So once you've found your bullet, then go and go to like Hodgson.com and use their reloading data center and then enter your bullet. You'll have a selection of different brands of powders, Winchester, uh, ram shot, hodged and that kind of thing. And then you'll filter down your results. And then, you know, you might want to look at anecdotal information, um, which powders are going to be the most efficient. And you'll want to look at the velocity data and decide which powder would be the first one to try. If you're doing something like close range hunting, you're not going to need to experiment with a bunch of different powders. If you really want to work on getting maximum velocity without pressure, or get really good groups, something like that, really tight SDs, then you're gonna to wanna to do some load development. So let's talk about bullets for 308 Winchester and 30 out six. After looking at all of Hodgson's data, the range of weight is actually the same for those sets of data. It starts at 125 grains and goes all the way up to 215 grains. And again, if you're pushing a 215 grain projectile, be doubly, triply sure to check the twist rate on your barrel because you may or may not be able to stabilize those bullets. Really anything up after 175, it's a good idea to, to take a look. If you're shooting 155s, 
you're likely to stabilize in just about any factory or custom rifle. So interestingly, 308 Winchester uh, was developed around 1 in 12 twist, whereas 30 out 6 was standardized around 1 in 10 twist. What I've found for newer rifles, a lot of them are going to be 1 in 10 for both. So what about velocity? Here's the interesting thing. We had 20% more case capacity for 30 out 6 over 308 Winchester. But I took a look at comparable load data. Uh, I looked at all of the load data that I got from Hodgson in, in a spreadsheet. I picked a 175 grain bullet because it kind of seemed like somewhere in the median between the two. And then I looked at the fastest load for 308 and the fastest load for 30 out 6 with that 175 grain bullet selected. And what I found was really interesting. For 308 Winchester with the 175 bullet, we had 2,511 feet per second, whereas for 30 out 6, we had 2,661 feet per second. So 30 out 6 only showed a 6% improvement in velocity over 308 Winchester for this specific scenario. That doesn't mean that's going to be the case across the board. There are just literally too many variables to, to just say it's going to be a 6% difference. But in this case, with Hodgson data, it was. We'll come back to that a little bit later. Okay, so ballistic comparison. I ran those numbers, I put them in Hornady's Ford Off app, and I came up with these, these two drop charts. And we can see that if we go out to 1,000 yards, what's the real difference with this same 175 grain bullet? It's 64.4 inches at 1,000 yards which sounds like a lot, but if you have a tight standard deviation on your velocity and you have a laser rangefinder and there's not much range uncertainty, it's just a matter of dialing your scope. So what does that look like with a picture? Here's a graph showing the difference and you can just see proportionally what 64 inches looks like at 1,000 yards in terms of the percentage difference there. You know, it's not a whole lot, it's a little over 10%, something like that, and the difference is going to steepen the further you go out past a thousand yards. But if you're going to beyond a thousand yards, you're going to probably pick a different cartridge in the first place. So I mentioned that there was something that I was going to come back to specifically related to that velocity difference. So earlier this year, we worked with Alpha Munitions, Brass, and Bat Machine to do an experiment. We wanted to push 308 Winchester to the absolute limit. Now, Alpha Munitions has a technology called OCD, Optimized Case Head Design, and their brass is absolutely just the mega strength brass. And this is one of those rare cases where we have small primer pockets, which are actually more pressure tolerant. Why would you choose one or the other? For me, it's I'm always going to use small rifle primers for bottleneck rifle cartridges before you get up to something like a 338 Winchester or you know any Magnum really except when I really care about cold weather performance hunting. Those large primers have a bit more ignition energy and can reliably ignite powder in colder temperatures. But for this experiment, we were using Alpha Munitions 308 Winchester small rifle primer brass, and we worked Varget up to velocities that are a little bit staggering. This chart here shows what we were able to do. So 308 Winchester is typically going to be in the 2200 to 2400 feet per second range for this 215 grain projectile. That's an important note here. These are lower velocities than you're going to see with lighter bullets. Of course, for 30-06, you would get 2300 to 2500 feet per second, perhaps. And for 300 wind mag, you'd get in the 2400 to 2800 range. Well, with 308 Winchester, we were able to get just over 2700 feet per second. So that's well into and close to the max for 300 wind mag. And this is not something that you want to try at home specifically because it's not safe to conduct this type of an experiment without some very serious considerations. And I would say you should just never do it. <laughs> but what we were able to show was that specifically with the right brass fired in the right action, we can see 308 Winchester go to some velocities that are truly extreme. So if you're going to run hotter loads, and again, I would say use extreme caution, do not do it. 
Whatever loads you're going to use, make sure you test in the warmest temperatures that you're likely to shoot in. Right? If you're going hunting and it's going to be 100 degrees, then test your ammunition in 100 degree weather. You don't have to put it in the sun, you know, because if it's in your magazine, it's not in the sun, right? But you want to test in the conditions that you're going to be shooting in. And if you really want to push things, sprinkle a little bit of water on the cases because it takes up more space in the chamber and in the throat area, and that will be a worst case scenario. Uh, and make sure that you don't have pressure signs. Look for flattened primers, look for case head swipe, those sorts of things. When in doubt, specifically for hunting, you're gonna to wanna to exercise more caution with everything, right? And so, you know, that's just something to keep in mind if you're gonna push things up towards uh, higher pressures where, you know, your weather and other factors can push things beyond what you would observe when you're testing. Okay, so wrapping it all up, uh, 308 and 30-06 are really more similar than different. You know, you've got more case capacity and more length with 30 out 6 is basically what it amounts to. Action length at the end of the day can definitely be a deciding factor as to whether you're going to go with a short action or a long action. If you're having a rifle built and you have a long action, you might as well go 30 out 6 If you have a short action, definitely 308 is a great option. And as you've seen, it can come very, very close, if not exceeding uh, the performance from 30 out 6 Both are great options. Both have a great ecosystem of components, ammunition, and rifles built around them. There's just so many options, it's, it's <laughs> hard to even quantify. So if you have a 308 or if you have a 30-06, you know, here's what I'd like to know is how do you like it? And if you're thinking about this, you know, from an experienced perspective or a new purchaser's perspective, what are you going to choose? 308 Winchester or 30-06 Springfield? Let me know down there in the comments section. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching Ultimate Reloader on TV and wanna take advantage of free resources, exclusives, and hot deals, just hold your camera phone up to the QR code, tap on the link, fill out the information, boom, you're getting Ultimate Reloader emails. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. Thanks again for watching.